This is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom his whole ummah accepted the message. The whole ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ يُونَسَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And Yunus is from among those messengers. A beautiful story, amazing story. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Nobody should claim that he is better than Jonah. His experience in life is quite unique. When he find himself inside the belly of the whale, did he blame the whale? Did he blame the people? Did he curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. So who is Yunus ibn Matta first, known in English as Jonah, son of Matta? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily Jonah was one of the messengers. He's also known as the Noon. Why is he known as the Noon? Because a Noon would mean the big fish. So he is the companion of the fish. Also, he is known as Sahibul Hud. Sahibul Hud is the same thing. So Yunus alayhi salam, he was sent to the people of Nainawa. Nainawa, it is in northern Iraq, very near to today's Mausil. He was sent to people with a great number. The population that the people he was sent to, there were about 100,000 and over. These people had turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Yunus to them. He was born amongst them. They knew his character. They knew his father, Matta. Yunus called them to the worship of Allah azza wa jal and ali Allah and to keep away from any worship beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Mosul rejected Yunus as they rejected, as many of the nations before rejected many of the prophets and messengers. He persisted. He was continuous. He tried and he tried and he tried with them. And Yunus alayhi salam, he warned and warned and warned his people from a punishment that Allah azza wa jalla sent on them the way he sent on many generations and many descendants or many generations and many nations before them. His people provoked him because of their persistence in animosity towards the religion of Allah. And they were harsh on him. Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam was irritated by their response and agitated. So he decided, you know what, I'm not winning with these people, let me go away. I might find other people somewhere very, very far away, and I might call them and they might come in to the fold, they might listen. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not instructed him to go away, but he wanted to go to spread the deen because he really wanted people to accept and nobody was accepting. So that irritation made him go. He walked away from Musul and traveled away from Musul without the permission of Allah Azza wa That was the mistake. Mistake, not sin. Prophets do not sin. They don't sin like you and me. But in their human judgments, they make mistakes. So he left them and he wants to get far as possible. So he went in the sea. So what happened is that Yunus alayhi salam, he went to the ship and then he's going to sail away. While on the sea, a storm came, a big storm. Subhanallah, the ship started rocking and after a while it started sinking. The people in the boat, they decided that in order for us to survive, we have to get rid of our luggage. They threw all of their luggage. Everything was gone. The ship is still sinking. The boat is still sinking. So now they have to throw out one of the passengers. They said there's only one way of being fair. We need to draw lots. So they cast the lot. It came on who? Yunus alayhi salam. When the name of Yunus came out, they looked at him, young, righteous, good believing person, honest. And he's a blessed man. And he's, you know, really an asset to the people on this boat. So let's try again. Do the lot again. Take the name out. Yunus. They said, no, no, no. We are not going to get rid of Yunus. This is our baraka. This is our blessing on board. He's the best man we have on board. We are not going to rid of him. Take the name the third time. Yunus alayhi salam. Now Yunus knows this is from Allah azza wa jal. So in the middle of the sea, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and he jumped out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded one of his creation, the whale or the big fish to swallow him. Immediately the whale came and swallowed him. They say that Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam was 
unconscious and then he woke up in the stomach of elhut the whale and he looked around him and he thought that he is in the grave he thought he died he didn't see the whale but that impression did not last long because he started touching around him and he found that this is not a grave this is a stomach of a whale the stomach of the whale is intended to do what to digest food the way he digests his food is that there is a very intense amount of acid inside his stomach and this acid inside the whale is 12 times the power of the acid inside of our stomach and some of the most powerful enzymes and digesting fluids are in the stomachs of the fish because if you notice fish do not chew their food they swallow it whole so sayyidina yunus his flesh his skin was peeling off yunus alayhi salam heard something he said oh allah what is it that i hear he said these are the tasbih of the pebbles on the depth of the seas and the tasbih of the fish inside the sea then he remembered he ran to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he made sujood and he told allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah i am making sujood to you in a place where no one made sujood to you before in the stomach of a whale and then he made his famous dua which was recorded in quran and what dua he made a powerful dua so powerful he called out in the darkness the darknesses the plural of darkness is used why there were three darknesses this was the darkness of the stomach of the whale in the darkness of the sea in the darkness of the night three darknesses he said la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimin none has the right to be worshiped but you glorified and exalted be you truly i have been of the wrong doers an admission of guilt and a witness of the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the sahaba radiyallahu anhum asked muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya rasulullah can we use the same dua he said why not allah says we saved yunus and thus we saved the believers therefore rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says this is the dua of the distress so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said whoever makes the dua of yunus alayhi salam his dua will be answered and the scholars say yunus alayhi salam stayed in the tummy of the whale for 40 days the minimum narration is says 3 days the weak voice of sayyidina yunus alayhi salam was heard by the angels in the utmost heavens this sound was familiar to them they knew who he was why because they would see pillars of light going up in the sky because of his good deeds that he used to do every day and every night they knew him because the good deeds are like pillars of light that traveling in the sky and reached to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and passed by the angels these angels went to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said oh allah is this not this worshiper every day we bringing his deeds up today we hearing this call a weak call from the bottom of the ocean ya allah isn't it him allah says yes it's my worshiper it is yunus So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us so we answered the dua we answered and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if it was not for the fact that he used to remember us before he would have remained in the stomach of the whale until the day of judgment because he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in moments of ease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of him in moments of difficulty Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in moments of ease Allah will remember you in moments of difficulty we need to remember Allah in our young age so that Allah will remember us in our old age remember Allah when you are healthy so Allah will remember you when you are ill remember Allah when you have free time so Allah will remember when you become busy remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are alive so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you when you are dead and when he made that dua it was the right formula that's what allah wanted his servant to say so allah he ordered that whale to swim directly towards the shore and he spit up on the shore like you and i we vomit that whale he vomit yunus onto the shore but he did not have skin to protect him from the sun rays he did not have skin to protect him from wind 
and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded a tree to grow over sayyidina yunus alayhi salam so that it would provide cover and shade for him and it will also provide him with food but now yunus alayhi salam has to finish his job he went back to his people when he went back to his people he was shocked why was he shocked it is said that when yunus alayhi salam left the punishment was hovering over them his nation start to see marks and signs of the punishment of allah coming things are not been natural things are not been normal they saw dark clouds dark clouds coming and they had known the stories of the previous nations hey hud alayhi salam left his people ad gone salih alayhi salam left his people samud gone Lot alayhi salam left his people the people of Lot gone so they realized oh if he left it means it's coming so they start to ask what's happening maybe it's the warning that Yunus had warned you and it looks like if you're really not going to make a difference in your life and turn to Allah Allah will punish you the way he's to punish the nations before you so they panicked what they did they did the right thing they repented to Allah they repented sincerely and all of them were crying men and women and children so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they all believed so we granted them enjoyment for a little while up to a fixed time allahu akbar so they all believed in him every single one of them without an exception this is the nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom his whole ummah accepted the message the whole ummah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people of yunus are an exception because before the other nations of the anbiya were being destroyed but with the people of yunus alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says was there any town that believed after seeing the punishment and its faith saved it from the punishment the answer is none except the people of yunus when they believed we removed from them the torment and disgrace in this life and we gave them enjoyment in this world for a while The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says no one has the right to say I am better than the servant of Allah Yunus ibn Matta The next story is the story of the story of ashab al-qarya when id ja'a hal mursalun when to the qarya came messengers صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك